for fitness and tennis and with the nature of the sport so everybody is kind of pushing the limits uh, physically mm-hmm. so you think they are on the on the side of overload or uh, they can still manage if they have a good training plan and uh, the maintenance plan mm. um well i always try to look at um let, let, the first thing that comes to my mind i can see the point i can definitely see the point but then my question would be do you think that fedra djokovic and nadal are overworked i think they push the limits of tennis and the physical physicality of tennis i think we are seeing the fittest players of all times at this moment in time it will probably be different in two years or five years but uh, i don't see them necessarily being overworked so i think there must be some form of preparation combination of preparation competition and recovery that allows them to be at the level they are at yes i understand that players who what i alluded to earlier who don't have the luxury to say okay these are the four slams that are these are the atp thousands and then i fill in another three tournaments um they have less ability to plan and just a bit more unpredictable but i still think you can manage workloads of training and competition and you should uh uh well i don't see a point of deliberately overworking if you know that there's a negative benefit a negative a negative influence of overwork i mean if they go into the overload they're going to get injured for sure yeah for sure i mean it's, it's i i i fully understand how a player and the coach must feel that if results are not good for two weeks or three weeks that the temptation is high okay let's do another two weeks but that if there had been already two or three bad weeks in a row how likely is it to have a good fourth week or a fifth week i know it's a tough call i know it's uh, probably um difficult for the player to say hmm, i have to step back and maybe i would do well but yeah well that's these are decisions you have to make huh not only Even when playing it, reds it's, it's it's in every part of life that you kind of doubt whether some decision should be done or not but i guess you it, it, if you put the pieces together and you think about it logically you can probably get the answer quickly yeah. i mean even when they're doing well i mean you are on a four week tour and first two weeks i mean you you win the tournament you grinded your way to 10 matches i mean it, it it's it's okay to miss the next week but because you you force yourself to next week you're struggling yeah. and then on hindsight you look back and feel maybe you should have missed it Yeah so it's all like you said stuff call i mean between the coach the player yeah. and the snc coach so i think as they play more i mean the fedras and nadal they know exactly how they feel yeah. and they take all uh, you know more precise now yeah but even then you can use this as a very good example i think there was one year djokovic um it must be 4 5 years ago i think he won 81 matches in a row uh <laughs> and then so i think until may he won basically every tournament he entered but then the rest of the year he didn't do that well so even they these guys right if they perform very well at the beginning of the year it tends to be difficult for them to maintain it throughout the year i don't know but again i'm always trying to look for patterns and uh, yeah analyze situations and i think it's the same with Yeah, you've you've seen you've seen players if they do very well for a long time. There seems to be some trade off later in the year or later in the season, and it's not for it's nothing. Good. It's yeah, there is a reason behind it. Yeah, <laughs> if you, if you play seven seven matches in fourteen days and then you win every match, yeah, well, at some point, it, yeah, 